Hello scholars and welcome back to Making Meaning. This week we will continue wondering with nonfiction and we're going to continue our text Butterflies asking and answering questions while we read. We will also be reading another text this week asking and answering questions. For today's lesson you are going to need a talk partner which you can speak in your home language if you are comfortable with that. Just want you to share your thinking and explain it really well. You're also gonna need paper and pencil today. So go ahead and take a moment to go grab those things so you're ready for our lesson. Wonderful. We left off with reading the first part of this text, talking about the colors of butterflies, what they look like, and we also talked about where they live and how they live, flying alone in the day and staying in groups during the night. Today we're gonna to read two more chapters and Let's review our wonders so we can look for answers while we read these two chapters. We wondered what different butterflies look like, and I put a star here because we started to answer that. Where do butterflies live? We've started to find that answer as well. I wonder, do butterflies like to be together or alone? I wonder what kinds of food butterflies eat, and how long do butterflies live? Now these two are still looking for answers in the text, and even though we starred these, we could still maybe look and see if there's more information about them while we're reading. Just because we find an answer doesn't mean that's the only answer. Sometimes there's more than one in the text. Okay. From butterfly, caterpillar to butterfly. A butterfly does not have wings when it is born. It starts out as a caterpillar. Caterpillars look like worms with many legs. They are green or brown. Some caterpillars are furry. Others are smooth. A caterpillar eats lots of leaves. It grows bigger and bigger. After a few weeks, the caterpillar crawls onto a leaf, hangs upside down from the leaf. It then spins a hard shell around its body. That's called a chrysalis. This is a picture, a photograph, of a chrysalis hanging from a branch. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. The butterfly does not grow any bigger. What steps does a caterpillar go through to become a butterfly? Stop and think. And when you're ready, turn to your partner. Perhaps one of the reasons uh, steps you shared with your partner so that we had the image of the caterpillar climbing up onto a leaf hanging upside down and turning into a chrysalis. One of my students favorite parts is when it turns into the butterfly and doesn't grow any bigger. Butterflies get their food from flowers. Flowers make nectar in their stems. Nectar is in bold. And so I want to share what that word means. That will be in the words to know section. Nectar, a sweet juice that flowers make. Where my finger is pointing. So a sweet juice. So let's try that again now that we know what that word means. Butterflies get their food from flowers. Flowers make nectar or sweet juice in their stems. Butterflies sip the nectar. Their mouth is shaped like a straw 
they suck the nectar through the straw. This photographs showing this butterfly sucking the nectar from the flower. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen sticks to their feet. Pollen is another bold print word. Pollen means a yellow powder that flowers make. Sounds better. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen sticks to their feet. They then carry the pollen from flower to flower. That helps the flowers grow. This says caterpillars are picky eaters. They will only eat certain kinds of plants. This photograph shows butterflies and flowers need each other, right? Because they butterflies need the flowers for the nectar and the flowers need to get their pollen on their little feet so that they of the butterfly so that they can bring it to another flower to help them grow. Some people plant butterfly gardens. That is a special place in the a backyard um, and that's where they plant special flowers for butterflies to come. Some people plant butterfly gardens. These gardens are full of flowers that butterflies like. People plant pink, yellow, red, and purple flowers in butterfly gardens. So as you can see, this butterfly is in a butterfly garden with yellow flowers. Then they watch the butterflies fly to, from flower to flower. A butterfly cannot fly if it's cold. It has to stand in the sun to warm up. What did you learn about butterfly gardens in this part of the book? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. Right, butterflies love colorful flowers, so people plant them in their yards to make a butterfly garden. That was one thing that we heard. They also like flowers, to plant flowers that butterflies like. That's very important. All right, scholars, let's take a look back at our wonder chart. Let's focus on these two here that we don't have answers, any answers to yet. I wonder what kinds of food butterflies eat and how long do butterflies live? Were any of our questions explained in the book? And how were they explained? Take a minute to stop and think. And when you know if they were explained and how, go ahead and turn to your partner now. That's right. We did learn that butterflies like to eat nectar. It says that on this page right here. They sip nectar because their mouth is shaped like a straw. Okay, so I can put a star on that one. And we also talked about how long do they live? Was that answered in the text? No, it wasn't. And that's okay because some of our questions are not answered from a text. That's why it's so great that we have in nonfiction books usually a back page that tells us more places we can go visit. So this page tells us more books that we could read or some websites. For example, this one says allaboutbutterflies.com. And this one is the children's butterfly site. Or Climate Kids, Plant a Butterfly Garden. So you could type in any of those in your search engine on the internet with your parents, and you could learn some more and see how long they might live. 
might give us an answer to that. All right, I now want you to think, what was something surprising or interesting that you learned about butterflies? Stop and think. Now, take your paper and your pencil, and with me, we're going to write. Something interesting I learned about butterflies is blank. Okay? So you can write while I write. You might have something different that you found interesting. Something interesting I learned about butterflies is, I want to make sure I'm accurate. I'm going to check back. Their mouth is shaped like a straw. That their mouth is shaped. Ooh, that ed ending with that sound. Like a straw to help. Oh, I'm getting fancy. I'm expanding my thinking to help them sip nectar. That is a nice full sentence explaining what I found interesting about butterflies. You can keep writing while I work on the next part. I wonder blank. So if it's in black, I expect you to write that is a great sentence starter. If it's in blue, that's my thinking, and then you put your own thinking in. So we should all have a something interesting and an I wonder. Something I wonder is, hmm, is how many different types of butterflies there are. How, wonder, how, there's my question word, many different, different types of butterflies, butter, Flies. I put that little line after butter because I ran out of room and then it connects flies at the bottom. The next line. I wonder how many different types of butterflies are there. I put my question mark because I'm asking a question. I'm going to give you another few minutes to finish writing that. Yours you find interesting and your question. Well, I get out our IDR book for today. Okay, you can go ahead and finish that on your own after our lesson if you haven't finished it yet. I wanna show you what your job is going to be for today for IDR. You need a fiction, make boy story, no, we've moved into nonfiction or real information texts. So go ahead and get a nonfiction text that's at your just right reading level. Today, you will need to read for at least 20 minutes so that you grow that brain. And I want to show you what I would like you to do when you're done reading today. Okay? This book might look familiar because I already have read this book. Remember, I talked about in our last lesson that we reread books because we figure out things that we didn't find the first time when we reread. So, I reread this text, Raccoon, by Isabel Thomas. After I finished reading, I thought about what this book is about before I was thinking it might be about raccoons in the city. Okay, so now that I've finished reading, I'm thinking, what is this book about? And I've got that in my brain. I'm also thinking something interesting I learned from this book. What was something interesting I learned? 
Well, I'm going to go back to that page and you should have marked it with a, a post-it or another piece of paper. Okay. And on this page, I, in the why do raccoons like living near people, that's where I marked my interesting fact. And I'm also thinking about what I still wonder after finishing this text. Once I've done that, got it in my brain, I'm going to write it out. I wrote, my book is Raccoon by Isabel Thomas. This book is about how raccoons survive in cities. Okay, That is a nice, complete thought when I put this book is about how and then finish the sentence. I confirm that when I finish reading. And something interesting I learned is raccoons like to fish in people's garden ponds. That was from this part right here. Okay, talks about they like to live near people because of all the food they leave behind. And we well, sometimes people have a pond in their backyard and they put little goldfish in it or koi fish, and the raccoons like to go fish for them. I thought that was really interesting. And then I wrote my wondering. I wonder how long raccoons can survive in a city. Is it as long as when they are in the wilderness? All right, scholars. That's your IDR. We have an extension today, though. I really enjoyed this extension, and I really enjoyed sharing my thinking, and I hope you're going to enjoy it, too. We often read books, and then we have opinions, or the way we feel or think about a text, or an idea, or a topic. Last couple lessons before, we read Insect Detective, and now we have also read a text called Butterflies. You read two texts about insects. Okay. We learned about several different kinds of insects in this text. What did we learn about insects from Insect Detective? Stop and think. Now, when you share, you will use I learned blank. Be specific. For example, I learned that wasps are social insects that build their nests together. Go ahead and turn to your partner. Great. I love hearing your thinking. I heard some people talked about the uh, earwigs and how they wash their eggs. They found that interesting. And dragonflies, how they start out as nymphs in the water and then grow their wings. Those are some things that we learned about in some of the insects from that book. And in butterflies, we just talked about this today. We learned that they come in many different colors and that they start out as caterpillars and then turn into butterflies and people plant gardens for them to come sip the nectar. Okay. So we get to share our opinion or how we think or feel about a most interesting type of insect and why. Which of these insects is the most interesting to you and why? The great thing about opinions is as long as you give reasons to support your thinking, then you can get people to change their mind and they might think the same way as you. They might have a different way of thinking as well, and as long as they use reasons to explain their thinking, then that's a valid point too. Not everyone has the same opinion. So when you're ready, turn to your partner and share your opinion and see what their opinion is. Do they like the same insect as you or a different insect?
Now that you've had a chance to share, we get to write opinions today. That's our extension activity. So after you finish your IDR in writing about your reading and your wonders, you can write a paper about what insect you find interesting and why, because I'm very curious to know. There's a lot of different insects we learned about. I'm gonna share with you what I found the most interesting. If it's in black writing, those are great sentence stem ideas for you to use in your own writing. The orange is my thinking. I said, I think blank. That's the sentence to start. I think the ground beetle is the most interesting insect we've read about. Okay. I think that because, there's your sentence starter, I think that because they gleam. Now, if, in my class, when we use vocabulary words, we always put a star by it so that we remind ourselves that we're using our strong second grade words. So go ahead and do that in your writing too if you use any of our vocabulary words. I think that because they gleam. I love how they can look beautiful and are also fierce predators. Remember, that means that they're great hunters is what it said in the book, to slugs and snails. It's a great example of how looks, they might be beautiful, but can be deceiving, but they are dangerous to those slugs and snails. This is a great start to an opinion piece about what I find is the most interesting insect. Now, it's your turn to go practice your wondering with your own text and share with us what your opinion is about the most interesting insect. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you for our next lesson.